Hello, everybody. I wanted to do another type of review-ish type thing, like I did with Batman v Superman. I didn't really, I don't really want to do it during the uh, the Let's Plays or anything, because I feel like if I were to talk about the spoilers and things like that, people that enjoy the Let's Play series would not really get to enjoy the Let's Play series because maybe they want to go see Suicide Squad. And haven't had a chance to. So I wanted to do another spoilerific uh, review of it. Probably spend the first uh, maybe five minutes uh, talking about it non-spoilerish. Give you guys my opinions. And then I'll talk about all the uh, the stuff in the movie that I really enjoyed. Um, I really, really enjoyed this movie. I thought, uh, you know... It's another situation where all the critics seem to hate it, but there's some critics that are outliers and they're, they're saying, Hey, you know, it's really fantastic. It's really enjoyable. Those are the ones I always try to listen to because I'm like, well, these are the ones that go in a little bit more optimistic. I feel like, and, um, frankly that, uh, I went on Thursday evening, frankly, Thursday wasn't a great day for me. <laughs> So I needed something to be a little bit better. And thank God Suicide Squad was so good. I mean, it's not like comparative to other comic book movies. It's not at the top of the list. It's not that amazing. But it was really good um, for what it was. I, it was more than I was expecting out of it. Um, how can I talk about it without spoiling it? for the first few minutes here. Um, it had a really cohesive plot that I was kind of surprised. I was really worried with all the cast and everything in it that they were going to go with another really complicated plot like Batman v Superman. I think I actually enjoyed Suicide Squad more. More? Did I just say more twice? I totally did. I enjoyed Suicide Squad more than Batman v Superman. Only because it had a very cohesive plot. It had a straight through plot line, which was really easy to follow. And it wasn't bouncing all over the place with these plots and everything. So I was really glad because I read some reviews that were like, it, it bounces all over the place. It doesn't have a cohesive plot. It's, it's full of stuff. It's too filled up. It's fatted. It's bloated. It wasn't. It was really cut down. The movie was slim as it could possibly be i think for having the cast and crew that it had um so i think yeah that'll probably be my just spoiler free review of it um please if you feel like you want to go see it go see it I, anytime somebody asks me um what i thought of it when i'm at work or outside or something or my friends they're like, what do you think of it? And I'm like, I think it's a great movie. It's really fun. It's a great popcorn flick. You get some popcorn, you get some friends, you get your family, you sit down, you watch this movie, and you come out and you're like, that was pretty good. And that's pretty much it. It's not going to change anything. It's not going to make you think about your life in a different way, as my friend Robert said. Um, it, it's, just, it's just a movie. It's just fun. And that's what I really enjoyed about it was that it was just fun. And I, I, I needed that out of the DCEU. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so I'm about to go into spoilers. So if you don't want to hear spoilers, then go ahead and um, turn this video off. I understand it's got spoilers in this video. So if, if you haven't seen it, don't, don't listen to this. But if you really want to stick around, go for it. Um, everyone out of the room? All right, cool. So this movie, the one thing that really hit me right at first, and it's pretty much just how it starts. It starts off with Amanda Waller, as we know. Amanda Waller is really cool in this movie. Uh, the, uh, I forget her name. Viola Davis, I think is her name. She nailed Amanda Waller. She's cold. She is heartless. She's in it for her own wants and needs, and she'll step over everyone else to get it. 
I love that. And people are afraid of her. Even the villains are afraid of her. Everyone's afraid of her. Because she will go to the depths of hell to get what she wants. And she'll make it happen. And she'll make you do what she wants. Um, I'll get into her a little bit more later on. But she's talking to, I think it's like the Secretary of Defense or something. Um, they're talking about how she wants to make a group of soldiers that can combat uh, dangerous forces that they normally could not send soldiers into or that they don't really want to rely on superheroes to go in and t handle probably stuff that needs to be kept on the lowdown because they don't, they, they did something and they need it taken care of without people knowing that it was the government involved. Um, so they start creating task force X, which is suicide squad. Um, the beginning of it was awesome. The way they did the character introductions, because that was the one thing I was like, ah, that's going to be a hell of a shot. They're really going to have to do a lot of character building. But they did um, splash screens, basically, and went through a lot of scenes with each of the characters, giving them backstory, talking about them, which was great. I love that. It was something straight out of the comic books that you would see, you know splash screen with the guy it tells him all his kits his kills what he's done what his height is you know it's very much reminiscent of like um in the original arkham asylum game when you got like a character bio and it would tell you all his information but at the same time they give you like a scene so like dead shot it brings him up and they're like he's the best shot he can hit anything and it brings it up and it shows Will Smith, who I really, really enjoyed in this. I didn't think I would enjoy him as much. I was a little worried about him playing Deadshot originally. But it is Will Smith and Will Smith is an amazing actor. And he plays Deadshot really good in this. Um, the thing with the whole movie is it has each character has their own um, kind of personality. But Ayers is going for very stereotypical uh, attitudes and stuff and personalities, which I really don't mind because it works. It, it narrows the person down to what he was designing for them to be. And uh, Will Smith plays it a lot like Fresh Prince, I guess, or, you know, more street. <laughs> wow, do I sound white? <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, he just plays at Will Smith. Like I think Will Smith talks all the time, especially in press interviews and stuff like that. He pretty much played himself, but, um, he played it great when he's they. The way it starts out is it shows him on a roof and he's doing a hit and he's talking to the, his employer and he's like, I don't see any money coming through. Uh, no hit unless I have the money. And they go through this whole argument and he's, uh, the guy's like, fine, fine, fine. Here's your money. And then he's like, now I want another million dollars just for being an asshole. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, it was great. It was great seeing that each character had their own introduction. Harley Quinn. Hers was, uh, I believe hers was based around a lot of the Joker. It, she had a pretty long one and, um, it showed like her and the Joker in, um, uh, the asylum talking, um, him breaking out with all the, uh, with all his henchmen and then him using, um, uh, like electro, th uh, electroshock therapy on her to kind of mess with her brain. Um, like you see in the trailer when he's like, Oh, I'm not going to hurt you or I'm not going to kill you. Sorry. I'm not going to kill you. I'm just going to hurt you. Really? really bad. Yeah. That whole scene. Um, so yeah, you get to see that part. Jared Leto in this movie, his Joker. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to hold off on Joker. I'm going to go with Harley, Harley, uh, Margot Robbie. She was great as Harley. I was really worried about her voice because in the trailers, it didn't seem like her voice matched really. Um, it seemed like she was doing something else, but throughout the movie, she does her voice, but she also gives it kind of that that Harley-ness to it when she talks. 
It was great. Also, I know a lot of people were a bit upset about her, uh, you know, Harley Quinn having like booty jeans or, you know, booty pants and like a belly shirt. But I think it worked. It really did not bother me at all during the movie. And honestly, it was kind of like, okay, that makes sense. She's just kind of going in with this, the way she's dressed. Um, but it was really, really nice. There's a scene in it that's very, very quick. It's a flashback, but it's, um, I, it may not even be a flashback, but it's, it's a, um, it's like a callback to the comics where you see Joker in a tux and he's looking very slick and very clean. And you see Harley in her Harlequin outfit, the jumpsuit with the Harlequin hat. And I was like, bravo airs, bravo for putting that in. That is awesome. And then even later on, when you see them all getting dressed, when they're about to be tasked to go take on the threat, um, she pulls out that suit and she looks at it and she's like, eh, and you, that was like perfect. If you, it was just like you showed that. And even if you didn't show that and she just went into that, it wouldn't have felt quite right, but it was really nice to see her pull it out of a trunk, look at it and be like, probably not appropriate and then put on something else. So I thought that was great. I thought it was, it was fantastic to see that it, it really, it was super quick, but it just plays into that whole idea. It's like people were upset about the suit, but this is the reason why. And a lot of the movie had a lot of reasons why something happens in it. And that was fantastic. I, I think Margot Robbie is a fantastic Harlequin. She plays it great. She's She's very intelligent, but she's also very crazy. She's funny. Uh, it, was, it was great. Oh, the one thing I would say um, in this movie that I kind of had a little bit of a problem with was they did a lot of jokes that were kind of like, huh, that's funny. But it wasn't really like a laugh out loud movie, which I didn't really think it was going to be. I, I, I would hope for jokes, but most of the jokes are already in the trailer, like the really hard hitting ones. So you're like, oh, I already heard that joke, but, um, there's some other laughs throughout the movie. Um, it, it's kind of just the interplay between them is kind of nice. And some of the, how they react to situations and stuff is really kind of, it's more of an enjoyable funny than it is actually funny. Um, so yeah, that, that's one of the things I would, that kind of was like, eh, it could have been funnier. Uh, but that's, it's totally fine. The movie was great as is, uh, who did they show off next? I think they showed off killer croc. No, did they? I think it was, it was a lot of Harley. And then actually, I think after that, it was El Diablo. Maybe you're wrong. It's either El Diablo boomerang or (laughs) croc. I think croc was the last out of them all. Um, Killer Croc, he was, he looked good. It looked good as Killer Croc, except when, like, he took his shirt off at one point. And I was like, oh, the guy's a little thin for the head makeup they put on him. (laughs) He's a little thin. But I guess it works because the crocodile's head is much, much longer and bigger and their body is kind of lithe. So they're going for that really, like, crocodile feel instead of, like, a big bulky dude. Um, which was fine. Killer Croc, he was mostly just kind of like the muscle and not really a big character. He was a very much a supporting character in the crew just to kind of have like that backbone of the team. That's like, well, I guess they have a giant alligator man that kills things. So that's cool. Uh, so yeah, Killer Croc was in there. Uh, El Diablo was actually a lot. Um, it was very surprising his story. I mean, you know, how, how his, he worked out. Um, but his was kind of an obvious tale, uh, especially towards later on. Um, but it shows him off and it just shows him like leaving a burning house and stuff. And you find out that he turned himself into the police. They're talking about how everyone was caught. Deadshot was caught by Batman, which was a really cool scene. Batman's only in this film a little bit, which is actually really nice because it reminds me a lot of um, Assault on Arkham, and Batman's not really in it 
a whole lot until like towards the end and very early in the beginning. And then most of it is the Suicide Squad. And really in the comics, when it's talking about like a villain or something, Batman's not really in there that whole that that much. Uh, same with Jared Little's Joker, very used very sparingly. Um, which I thought was great because if they had brought both of them in and made them have lots of scenes, then it would have been a Batman and Joker movie with Suicide Squad dashed across it. So I'm glad that they didn't focus on that because if they had, it would have it would have been probably more of a, it would have been a messy movie if they had chosen to go that way. And it would have taken a lot of steam out of the characters from that point on. I'm excited to see more Batman. I want to see the Batman uh, standalone film, which I've heard rumors is going to be Red Hood uh, under the Red Hood and slash death in the family. Um, so that'll be really cool to see that. Uh, but back to El Diablo, he uh, it was kind of a sad character. He had killed his family um, on accident in rage, however you want to look at it. And uh, was not using his powers anymore because he didn't want to hurt people anymore. That wasn't him. He wanted to give that up. Um, but he gets tasked into the team anyway. Uh, Boomerang had a great opening scene. It was him and another guy uh, robbing a diamond exchange. And they're getting out. And he throws a boomerang, kills the other guy, and starts leaving with all the money and everything. And then Flash shows up, and I was like, yay! I pretty much knew it before the movie was going to... I went and saw the movie that there was going to be a Flash scene, but I was very happy to see it because it was actually very cool. It was just very quick, but it gave you that idea that this takes place in Central... You know, that scene takes place in Central City. They have to ship Boomerang there from Central City to uh, be a part of the team and everything. Uh, so that was really cool. Um, Killer Croc, mostly just him killing people in his scene and then gives like a flashover of his characteristics and everything, which was fine. He's not really like a huge character uh, in the team. Um, from the beginning after that, it goes a lot into um, Enchantress. I think actually Enchantress was the third one in, honestly. Um thinking back now, but it shows, uh, June moon going into a cave, finding a little, uh, relic that contains enchantress and then enchantress taking over her. And then after they talk about, Oh God, I'm hitting the microphone talking. My hands move a lot. When I talk guys, <laughs> unless I'm playing video games, then my hands are moving because of that. <laughs> but, um, it goes into another, it cuts from that directly into them being in the white house. And they're like, what if Superman came down into the white house and pulled the president out, which at first felt a little bit repetitive because they had just been talking about that. And then they're like, Viola Davis has a plan for this. Would you like to share? And, uh, they're arguing about if it'll work or not. And then she brings June moon up who is Enchantress and uh, uh, well, uh, Amanda Waller played by Viola, Viola Davis, Amanda Waller. She has uh, June or er, the Enchantress's heart in a box and she controls the Enchantress that way. But uh, she basically tells Enchantress to change and then asks her to go uh, retrieve some information that they could never have gotten and bring it there to the secretary or whatever they are, the secretary of defense, the meeting group in the Pentagon or whatever that they were at. And, um, but it was, there were a lot of moments in this movie that were just super cool to watch. Like, you know, the flash and boomerang scene, uh, dead shot being dead shot and the Harley Quinn and Joker thing was really cool to see. Um, but it shows her changing into Enchantress the first time you see it and you just see like it was almost something out of like the grudge. It was very creepy at first, but you see just like a dark hand grasp her hand and then it flips and it goes up her arm and she flips and changes into. Well, it doesn't show her flipping, but I imagine like her whole body turns into this like whoosh 
and she turned into the Enchantress. And it was very cool. It was very much like that magic where it just goes from one to the other instantaneously in a very like mystical way. Like this shouldn't happen. This is not how it works. I love that. I thought it was very cool. Uh, Enchantress was very cool in this. Uh, her June moon and Rick flag. They're dating. Rick flag is kind of like the, um, uh, they, they all have, I guess there's not really a person in this movie that ha- is like the sob person because they all have, it shows like every person in this movie has a rough backstory and that's what makes them villains or that makes them bad people. Uh, most of these people are bad people. I imagine Rick flag is not the best man in the world and not the best, uh, soldier. Um, I mean, he's good at his job, but not the best person, but pretty much everyone is not the best person. June moon and Rick flag. They're probably the outliers in it, but most of these people, they have a back, a bad history and that's what makes them bad or it makes them the way they are now. And I really like them showing that for pretty much everyone, you know, except for like killer croc. Oh, I forgot slipknot. He's literally in the movie for about 15 minutes. It shows him like the scene that you get to see in the trailer where he punches somebody and then he looks at everyone and she, I think he has one line in the movie and it's, she had a mouth. (laughs) That's it. That was his whole line, but I knew it. I was so happy when there's a scene in the trailer where you see him fire up uh, his lines onto some buildings. But basically before that, uh, let's go way back. So everyone's getting uh, tasked because Enchantress gets out. They're trying to take down. Um, well, Enchantress un- re- releases her brother a- into the world. And her brother is the uh, monster type thing that you see in the trailer tearing apart a subway. And um, it's pretty cool. He's just kind of the muscle between the two of them. Um kind of the big threat at first. And then she becomes the big threat beyond that. But, uh, she gets out, they release him. Then they try to get her to take him out. That doesn't work because she turns on them and then all chaos breaks out. And then task force X is brought in and they start getting everyone together. Uh, they all get suited up and everything. You get to hear some lovely talk between each of them. There's a lot of great music in this in this movie. Not like great, great music. I mean, it's modern music. So, but for what it was, I was like, yeah, cool. It, it felt good because it, it was a little bit more just like it was kind of that cheese in a movie that I really like. Um, but yeah, anyway. They're all getting together. He meets Slipknot for the first time. He doesn't even get a backstory thing in the beginning because he really doesn't matter. They put it, give everyone their shots that puts the bomb in their necks in case they die. Uh, and during that whole scene, you get to see Joker. He's plotting to get Harley back out of prison, but they need to go get those bombs. He finds out that from this prison guard who is hilarious through the whole movie. He's, basically the one that gets picked on. I have to figure out what his name is because I'm wondering if he's uh, not cash, but there's that other guard from Arkham Asylum, the original game who ends up dying. I wonder if he's playing that kind ki- that character. I'll have to Google it and find out. Um, but uh, he finds out that they have bombs in their necks, So he breaks into a lab to get the bombs uh, which is great. It, it was fun to see that. Anyway, back to everything else. They get into the city after their helicopter explodes because they got shot down by alien monsters while there's a big swirly thing in the sky, which Enchantress is creating, which is basically like a super laser. I don't know what to call it, but it's this swirly laser that with locations that she can find out, uh, she can bomb stuff and destroy it instantaneously with like this lightning blast. It's very cool. Very cool. Uh, but they crash, they're walking and, uh, 
Boomerang's talking to Slipknot and he's like, hey, you know, I, I have places to be. I have a life to live. Are you in with me? We're going to run. And Slipknot like, yeah, sure I'm in. They try to make a run for it. Uh, right before this, I'm going to bounce around. If you guys haven't figured out how I talk about things, bounce around. This is one thing that reminds me of another thing and then another thing. Anyway, but um, you get to meet Katana before all this when they're in the helicopter. I feel like Katana was only there to have her there, kind of, or as something like, I don't really know. I feel like Katana was just kind of jammed in there. She could have been left out, personally. But she had some funny stuff with her, but it was mostly she was like Rick Flag's emergency uh, protection, you know, her his right hand protection or whatever, you know, she protected him from them. So that's basically what her ro role was. Not very exciting, but it was really cool to see her and see her sword and everything and see her. Uh, take on people, but she stops boomerang, but Slipknot, he takes off. He's like, I'm out of here. I'm going up in the air. He can climb anything with his ropes. At that moment, Rip Flag has a little thing on his arm and he presses a button and then pop. There goes uh, Slip Slipknot's head. And I was like, yes, yes. I knew he was going to die because he's so stupid. <laughs> Let's be honest, not really a great character. It, it was, it, he's pretty, pretty dumb. Um, but yeah, he, it's, it's not the same KG Beast is, but in Assault on Arkham, KG Beast, they're like, Viola Davis is like, you can leave if you want. Right out that door. And KG Beast is like, fine, I'm leaving. And then he walks out the front, er, out the door and immediately his bomb goes off and blows his head off. Which was great, because he, Slipknot, became the sacrificial lamb to let everyone know, you fuck up, pop, there goes your head. That's it. There's, there's no, there's no playing around. You don't listen, you run away, pop, there goes your head. You're not in, you're not in the team anymore. Um, so yeah, that was really good to see. And then it goes in a lot of fighting, which was great to, to watch, especially um, Will Smith as Deadshot, watching him go with his hand uh, pistols, his hand rifle, whatever, his hand guns, which are cool. I guess hand guns are the gauntlets on his hands that shoot bullets. <laughs> it was great to see that his wrist mounted guns. It was very cool to watch him shoot people up, just take out like. Hundreds of these uh, weird monsters. I was also kind of glad because I, I was really, really sure that Common, who is playing Monster T in this movie, I th really, really thought that he was going to be the tattooed man and that would explain all this like goopy black stuff because it looked like ink, you know, like everything got inked. But that was not the case. Uh, Common gets his head. I'm pretty sure he dies. Yeah, he dies. But I'm pretty sure he gets his head shot really early on by the Joker. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I was kind of glad that that didn't happen because this seemed a little bit more interesting than just having Common being the tattooed man. Um, which I think would have really confused people. They would have been like, what the hell is going on? Why is this man's tattoos coming off? I think it actually would have been a lot weirder and a lot more doofy than just that Enchantress has the power to, like, create zombies. And as soon as I saw that, that Enchantress was creating these, there are these weird zombie things. You get to see them in the trailer. They have, like, goopy heads that, like, it looks kind of like an avocado head. It's like like an octopus or something. It's very gross, very weird, kind of alien. But um, it, it, once I saw that, it immediately reminded me of Justice League Dark. If you guys haven't read that? Go watch or go read Justice League Dark because 
literally like the first thing they have to take on is Enchantress because Enchantress has gone bad and she's creating zombies everywhere. But I was really happy to see that because it reminded me of that comic. And I was like, oh my God, Ayers totally took that from the comics, which was great. It was a great story to choose for them. Um, although Justice League Dark is about like Constantine and uh, Zatanna and them all together, which is also really cool. I would love to see a Justice League Dark movie. I think they were planning on doing it. I really hope they do. Because that would be really awesome to see that. Um, lots of killing. Lots more killing. Uh, Will Smith eggs on Diablo. He burns a lot of people. They're like, wow, that was cool. Um, and then they find out they're saving Amanda Waller. And they're kind of like, well, that seems less immediate than the giant threat in the sky. And they're like, that's the mission. You're here to save Amanda Waller. She's the one who tasked you guys with this. Um, but throughout the movie, you get to see how aggressive she is. Um, and it like spirals further, you know, at first she's at dinner, she's talking to the general, she's very assertive. Then she's very assertive in, um, the first meeting where she shows off Enchantress. Um, you see her the, when the helicopter crashes, she freaks out because she's like, I made this, this has the work, this has the work or I'll never be able to do it again. Thankfully, everyone survived the helicopter crash and she was like, oh, my God, thank you. But you get to see that kind of human side of her that she's like, this has to work. This has to work. I have to make this work. Um, but they go in, they save her. It's just dead shot in there with flag and her and some other FBI agents. And um, they're all burning. All, they're deleting all the files, burning all the files. And then after they're done, they say they're done and they're like, all right, time to get out of here. She turns with a gun and blasts all these uh, agents or, you know, central intelligence agents. I don't know what they were. They were people that were working with her. So I imagine they're top secret people, but shoots them all. And I was like, wow, that was abrupt. But um, I've seen some people complain about it. Like, that, that doesn't really feel like Amanda Waller. I think that's the complete opposite. I feel like that she saw that this did not go well. And that Enchantress was also part of her deal. That didn't go very well. Not that people higher up from her wouldn't see that as, a, uh, as what happened. But they may not know everything. Um, that Enchantress is involved or anything like that. But, um, she basically kills them and I'm like, oh, okay. So she's killing all of them in case they know anything so that there's no debriefing from them. She can give them the story that she wants this situation to be. Task Force X came in, handled the situation perfectly, just as I decided them to do. That's why, because that's Amanda Waller. She will kill everyone and anyone do anything discreet and dirty to get what she wants because that's what she wants. I love it. I love it. It's Amanda Waller. She's a badass. She's scary. She's a terrifying woman. And they, they, they nailed it. Um, what else happened after that? Oh yeah. Uh, they were supposed to get on a helicopter. Joker hijacked that and, uh, bombarded them with, with just, Gatling guns and stuff. And then they save Harley. Oh, and then the helicopter crashes because Amanda Waller sends in a uh, missile barrage to destroy the helicopter. Uh, Harley survives. Surprisingly, it really, she really should have died, honestly, but she survives. Thankfully. Um, but Joker is thought to have died, but he doesn't. Uh, he comes back at the end, which is, you know, Yay. Uh, Amanda leaves. Then she gets shot down again. Cause you know, that's just how it works. She gets taken down by the, uh, brother of Enchantress. Uh, and then they find out 
that's what we gotta do. We gotta go do this. And then uh, Will Smith's dead shot finds out some information like that June Moon and Rick Flagg were dating and that they are a suicide squad. If everything goes wrong, they get blamed for it. Uh, so they, they learn about that. There's a really nice scene of them in a bar uh, that you see in the trailer, but it's cut down immensely. Uh, them talking. I'm just really skipping ahead here. Uh, and then they go to save Amanda Waller. She's been taken by Enchantress, and you, they're using her intelligence of secret locations around the Earth that are, belong to the military so that they can destroy them. Uh, like the most secret, top secret places where they're working on everything, destroying those places uh, with this giant thing. Um, Enchantress is using that. Uh, they go. Oh, actually, I should stop at the bar because it had a really funny scene. You know, they're talking. Rick Flagg comes in. They're like, we don't want you here. And then he tells them, you know, he's like, you probably found out about me and Moon together. And uh, he's just kind of sobbing to them basically then he destroys the little arm thing that has bombs in their necks and he's like you're free to go and it was probably my favorite scene i really liked captain boomerang in this i thought he was very funny it was probably one of jai courtney's best performances honestly (laughs) only because he got to be australian you know he just got to use his regular accent and he wasn't really like the main character he was a supporting character, and he got to do, like, goofy, silly things that were fun to watch. Um, but as soon as Rick Flagg says that, he grabs up, like, I think it's either energy drinks. It looks like energy drinks. It looks like the entire time he's drinking energy drinks. Unless it's beer. In that case, he's drunk this entire movie, which is great. <laughs> but he just grabs up, like, six of them and runs out the door, and they're like, well, he's gone. <laughs> But um, yeah, that was it was it was really good to see that. It, I was very happily surprised about Boomerang that he was just more of kind of like this goop, goofy. I don't want to be here, and I'm not really gonna do a lot to help you guys. I really don't want to be here. That kind of a character. So that was good to see. Anyway, beyond that, they go. They uh, are gonna face Enchantress. Uh, they just start taking her on. It's a really long fight scene. Uh, El Diablo, um, takes on Enchantress's brother and becomes this, like, skeleton. I don't know. It was this weird, like, skeleton demon monster. And I was like, that's freaking awesome. And he's beating up on this giant dude. That's Enchantress's brother. They're fighting. They're going at it. Um, and that's when I realized I'm like, oh, he's the like sad character. Uh, so he dies. And that once I saw that start to happen, you know, he gets the really badass reveal. You know, he's this giant demonic skeleton that can take on this god. And then he dies, of course. Eh, it's fine. Um, they take on Enchantress, and that was pretty cool to see this long fight scene in kind of like fog and smoke while the shit's exploding around them. Keeps cutting back to like the military they're watching as their like secret top, top secret bases get destroyed, their satellites get destroyed, everything's getting destroyed by this giant laser in the sky. Um, they beat her, and everything they made this giant circle of like tanks and weird stuff it was very weird but uh it just drops out of the sky and it's just there's no music it just drops out of the sky and hits the ground it's like uh and pretty much after that uh amanda waller comes out they're like how are you still alive (laughs) and that was really funny um and she's still like you guys can't leave until this is all taken care of and uh, they asked for some some special things to happen for them. And Amanda Waller is like, fine. Okay. Saved my life. I'll give you little things. Um, outside, they're like, 
smaller prison sentence they they originally had. Uh, really nice scene of Deadshot with his daughter talking, you know, talking her through math using his profession, and she seemed pretty okay with the fact that he's a killer. He's not the best person in the world, but he's a good dad. And that's what really mattered between them. Uh, shows like Killer Croc watching BET. Hey, who else? Who else got things? Oh, Harley got a espresso or an espresso machine. Yeah, it was just kind of like their little things. Um, June Moon survived. I don't know if she's still got Enchantress powers. I imagine she still does. One way or another, she still has it in her. Uh, so we'll see what comes up with that. And then, and then after the credits, Batman and Amanda Waller talking. Batman's getting information from Amanda Waller about the Justice League and Enchantress, which was weird. I don't know why her picture was in there, but it's a big threat. It might have been after this whole situation happened and she's like here's the information on enchantress in case this happens again i know you have friends that are powerful um he, he, she's basically like you have to protect us and he's like we'll protect you if you give us this information um and then they're talking more and she's like why do you want to make this and uh yeah which wasn't really the most exciting scene but it was really nice like this is coming up next, basically, since we've already seen the Comic-Con footage where they're getting the team together. And we knew it at the end of Batman v Superman that they get the team together. Um, I thought it was nice, though, because I've seen some people complain about it. They're like, why? We already know that. But it was kind of nice to see where Batman got this information other than just like rumor files that he hacked from Lex Luthor. That may not be like any information of where these people are. This is like from the government, what we have, everything we have on these individuals. So that was pretty cool. Um, what else can I say about it? All the characters were great. The action was fun. It was fun to watch. It very much reminds me of a comic book. Watching like a lot of the scenes, you know, when you get into a fight, the fights are long. And it's like several pages. Um, comparative to like conversations, which may just be like one page, but the fight can take like several pages or even several editions. Um, so yeah, it was really cool to see that seeing them just be the characters was great. It, I, everyone did a fantastic job as their character. They all played it perfectly. Um, there's a few things that I would complain about it. The one thing that I kind of had a problem with the Joker was there. I really want to see more of Jared Leto's Joker because I don't think we got to see it to its full extent. Um, I really liked him in the moments where he's having, he's more wild and crazy. Like when he's shooting a machine gun in a, in a helicopter while uh, his friend or his first man frost is mowing people down with a, a Gatling gun. He's just going crazy with this golden machine gun. Or when he puts his hand out for a prison guard to kiss his hand. And then he tells him, I knew you meant that. And, um, you know, when, when, when he was having fun, that's when it was really good to watch him. But when he's in his quiet, he does this really like dissociative type of thing which i guess works it, the joker is crazy but i always feel like the joker is very emotive and he does this very dissociative thing where he just like kind of stares doesn't talk and he just kind of sways and looks around like he's not really there um or he's high and he does a lot of like a like a growling thing like not talking but just like snarling at people I'd like to see a lot less of that. But when he's emoting, when he's talking, it's actually really fun to hear him talk because he's kind of like, it's kind of like all over the place and kind of a little bit about out of tune with reality and a little bit lost in his own mind. Um, but yeah, that other than really like his 
When he gets to the slow parts, then I don't really enjoy it. But when he's emoting and he's talking, it's fun to watch. Um, just like Heath Ledger's Joker, you know, like when he talks and stuff, it feels enjoyable to listen to him because it's this almost extremely intelligent yet psycho babble that comes out of his mouth. So I, I, I love when jokers have that. Um, honestly, tattoos didn't really bother me as much. Although Jared Leto is a little bit too good looking to be the joker. I think, I don't know. Sometimes he just looked a little too handsome and I, and he made joker to be a little bit, mm, just a little bit more disheveled or just dis- however you say that the word disheveled just kind of like trashy looking sometimes he just looks a little too nice too clean too trimmed um but that's fine uh what else bothered me the part where um i'm pretty sure a lot of this movie got cut out and i want to talk about some stuff in um the next dco let's play episode But, um, when Flag says you all can leave and then Boomerang leaves, like the scene after that, they go outside in the rain and then they're like, we're going to go do do this. And there's kind of a nice scene between Mo Smith and Rick Flag. And he's like, we're going to go save her. And my daughter's going to know that her dad is not a piece of shit. And, um, Immediately after that, you see Boomerang come back, and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He just left. Was he just, like, waiting outside for everyone to come out, and then he's like, nah, I was just fucking with you guys. There wasn't quite enough explanation about that. And there's a part where Killer Croc's going to go underwater, and the actor that does it jumps down on the ground and does this, like, back leg kicking type thing on the ground like he's an alligator walking on all fours don't do that (laughs) it looks so stupid it's like when you see a kid get down and pretend to be a dog or you know anybody you know like when you're a kid or fuck it when you see somebody get down and pretend to be a dog um and they're like crawling on all fours or whatever That's what it looked like. And it looked doofy as hell. I wanted him to just dive into the water. And they're like, holy shit. I couldn't do that. I'm not an alligator. That would have been cool. But he like gets down on the ground and then like slowly like wiggles down into the water. It's very kind of awkward to watch it. I was kind of like, hmm. Did nobody watch that scene and be like, let's do that differently. Personally, I would have. I would have been like, uh, you know, it was great effort on your part to just get down there and try that. But I think we're just going to do some CGI real quick and make you jump into the water. It's like it'd be a lot easier. So, uh, yeah. Uh, honestly, those are really my only complaints about the movie. I honestly thought the entire movie was really good. It's not like a fantastic story. It's not like it's going to do anything special. It's not going to be like the next Emmy winner or the next Oscar winner. It's just a fun comic book movie. And it very much leans toward the comic books. And that made me really happy to see that it was very much aimed towards like the comic book crowd. You see these scenes. It's like the covers that you remember you see a frame and you're like, that's it. That's the scene I remember. It was great. I I loved it. I think you guys should go see it. I think it was really fun to watch. Um, I plan on going seeing it again. So yeah, uh, definitely go check it out. It's a really good, um, it's a really good step in the right direction for the DC cinematic universe or extended universe as they're calling it. Um, yeah, I th- I think this is a, uh, a good step forward. You know, it's a very simplistic story as you kind of could tell, you know, other than like the beginning where it, um, showed off everybody, but it really was just 
Amanda Waller talking to a person and explaining these people, but you get the visual instead of just hearing Amanda Waller talk about these characters. That would have been so freaking boring. But you actually get story and backstory on these characters, and it was really fun to watch. Um, so yeah, I think it was great. I gave it a B. Um, I think I gave Batman v Superman like a high C, middle C. Um, yeah. So it's a little bit better than Batman v Superman, only because it has that very simplistic plot that makes sense. It makes sense in the comic book world. You know, you have this really powerful entity that's being abused by the government, goes crazy, tries to destroy the world. You get a group of crazy people that have been just put together to go take it on. Somehow they win. It, the odds aren't on their side at all. They really should have died. A lot of them. Two of them died. Yeah, two of them died. So yeah. I mean, it, it was it was great. With, it, without Diablo, they would have died, though. They would have lost against her brother. But he saved their lives, and then they took on Enchantress, who surprisingly didn't use a lot of magic. She did a lot of fighting and teleporting. But that's fine with me. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of my review on it. Sorry if you guys don't like this video, um, but I hope you get, did. I just wanted to give you guys kind of my opinion on what I thought of the movie. I think I'll probably do it for like all the DC movies just because like, like Marvel, they have a, a, um, a formula. They've perfected this formula over time. And they, that's the way their movies work. But DC, it's new. And they're trying to flesh out how they want their formula to work. Which is fine. And I think Marvel kind of did that at first. They had, um, they had like the first Incredible Hulk movie. And then it didn't really work. And then they had the... I think around the same time they had the Spider-Man movies. And they were like, hey, this might work. And then the second one, it was like, oh, that one was pretty good. And then the third one was like a uh, chaotic mess. And they were like, that's not going to work. How are we going to do this? And then they made another Hulk movie. And it was all right. It was good with Edward Norton. And then they made Iron Man. And that's when they perfected the formula. That, or that's when they got the formula right. And then they just continued to perfect on that formula. And then Disney got involved. And Disney's like, this is our formula. This is your formula. Let's mix them. This is how it works. But DC and Warner Brothers, every movie that's ever come out, it always kind of has like that director's take on it. So right now they're trying to figure out how are we going to differentiate our movies? And what I've found, seem to find is what they're trying to do is they're really trying to focus on very much comic book nerds. They're trying to focus on the fans of the comic books. That's where they want to focus their main targets is on, is on them. They want to try to do it, you know, pull these scenes straight from the comic books, which is great idea, but I think they might need to mess with it a little bit more. They could loosen it up a little bit and make it a little bit more mainstream so that more crowds can come in and kind of enjoy it a little bit more. But I think this movie will do great. I think it will do just good enough. Um, I don't think the review... I mean, you know, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but some of the reviews were just really rough, and it was very clear that the people did not understand what was happening throughout the uh, movie. But, yeah. Uh, I think DC will figure it out eventually. Hopefully. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. They're just not going to find their feet. It's really hard for them, too, because they're competing with Marvel, who has this very set way of how they do their movies. Like, if you watch a Marvel movie, it's got that same sort of plot. It's like a Disney movie. Disney movies always have a similar, like, formula that works, you know? You have the good characters and everything. They come into, like, an idea... And then something bad happens, then there's a sad part, and you get all emotional, and then everyone rallies in the end. That's pretty much how it works for most Disney movies. Um, but yeah, 
I think DC will find their feet eventually here. Probably Wonder Woman's going to really set a tone. We'll see. I don't know. I think it looks really good, but I don't, I really don't know. I have a feeling the critics will hate it again, but it will be an amazing movie. I want that to be the one where like critics absolutely hate it, but the fans give it like a hundred percent. That would be amazing to me. It's just like this huge split that people, the audiences that watch it love it. The critics seem like a bunch of D bags. I, that would make me really happy. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you all next time. <laughs>